the Babylon Bee Podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Babylon Bee, your favorite movie studio. I'm Kyle Mann, the editor-in-chief of the Babylon Bee, and I'm hanging out with Dan Coates, our producer. Hey, everybody. And we've also got Travis. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. This is the show that we that covers the news. The only one you listen to that covers the news. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's exciting. Guys, the Babylon Bee movie is out now. January 6th, the most deadliest day. Go check it out at babylonbee.com slash January 6th. We had our launch last week. Huge success. Mm-hmm. Tons Huge. of people signing up to watch it. And we really, really appreciate the support. Hope you guys enjoyed the movie. Share it with a friend. Send them the link. Have them sign up. And uh, if you sign up two people, you'll get a percentage of their downline. And then if those two people mm-hmm. sent, sign up two people, yeah. and it makes this it's triangle shape. triangular shape, yeah. and that's how we're going to take over the world. Mm-hmm. Not really, you don't get any cut of anything mm. if you send it to a friend. But do share it with a friend, please. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the movie. Drop any thoughts in the comments, uh, comment section there. We were kind of blown away by how many people signed up and joined. So yeah, yeah, we're we're very happy and uh, overwhelmed with the support we've seen on Twitter and well, not Reddit, but Twitter. <laughs> we'll get into that <laughs> in a second. But yeah, go check it out. Babylonbee.com slash January sixth. So fun to. Uh, hey Ma, I'm in pictures. Yeah, I'm in pictures now, Ma. That's what yeah, I said. That's to what my Travis mom. said. That, to his oh, Travis mom. Said that's, what, that's what I said to, direct quote. to my mom. Yeah. And she's like, Oh, how do I watch it? And I'm like, Well, you have to give me money. And she did. It's like 12 bucks a month. Yeah. For the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I mean, it's huge that we have this many people signing up because it means that we can start working on the next one. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're, you're like, Hey, that was pretty good. Good job, guys. The next one's going to be even better. Yeah. So, and made entirely with talking animals? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Could be. And if you thought it was bad, you should still give us money because then we can use that money to make the next one better. To make the next yeah. one good, yeah. yeah. That's right. Exactly. It's, all, it's an investment. All right, we have um, a lot of things to promote. We also have the Babylon Bee Guide to the Apocalypse, which is our book that is coming out on November 12th. We wrote the Guide to the Apocalypse and we set it to co- come out right after the election because it will probably be the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Either, one, way, one way or the other. Exactly. Either Trump's going to win and the left is going to be burning the country down or Kamala's going to win and her platform is literally pro-apocalypse. Yeah. So check that out. That'll help you survive the apocalypse. You can check it out on Amazon. I believe it's also on our store at shop.babylonbe.com where you can pre-order it and use promo code podcast on our store and use promo code po- podcast if you sign up for the B because you get a little discount. And all the normies that don't listen to the podcast pay full price. You're really channeling Joe Biden there. Listen, folks. <laughs> what does he always say? I'm not lying or uh, no, no joke. Not not a joke. I, I'm totally serious. And then he goes, not joking. Donald Trump needs to pay his fair share of taxes. Pay their fair share. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to pay your fair share if you use promo code podcast at babylonbee.com slash January sixth or on our store at shop.babylonbee.com. We've got cool stuff like this too. Cool hoodie. Yeah. Cool Just hoodie. a secret inside trading tip for you. Nice order the larger, hats. order one size up though. They're, 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 they're a little mm-hmm. on the snug side. This is an XXXXL. Not really. But <laughs> I, I usually like go medium for a little snug fit so people uh-huh. can see my triceps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I, I can't even fit in the medium on this. So I, oh, so I have to go up to large. That is sad. That's yeah, very sad. Hey, we got a lot of news to cover. We have a new hero of the faith. And in the subscriber lounge, I'm going to give my insider thoughts on directing, writing, and starring in my own movie <laughs> using company funds. It's an election year and lefties seem a little crazier than normal. So we're going to dramatically read some crazy leftist takes this week, which will be fun. Mm. But first, we've got a hate mail extravaganza for you. So let's dig in. Let me ask you a question. Do you think our country is going in the right direction? Or does it feel like everything's falling apart? If you're feeling alarmed, you're not alone. In fact, Americans from all walks of life have taken action to prepare for whatever's coming next. And that starts with having an emergency food supply. Storing food in your home is the right thing to do because we're living in crazy times, which explains why so many people are preparing. Right now, you can get ready too with a three month emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply. It comes with delicious foods like creamy stroganoff, honey wheat bread, and mushroom rice pilaf. The entire kit offers over 2,000 calories every day. 
This food kit lasts up to 25 years. Who knows what our country will look like then? It might look like the Planet of the Apes. But when that day comes, you'll be ready. Go to preparewithbee.com now to order your three month emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply. Go to preparewithbee.com and fight those darn dirty apes. You used to be good. Adam Ford. Adam Ford. Adam Ford. Adam Ford. I really miss Adam Ford. All right. Uh, we got a lot of hate mail, specifically because of our movie that was getting a lot of buzz and traction on the internet. Here's a uh, comment about the Babylon Bee from Spooky Magool, who says, just got two ads in a row for the dog slop Babylon Bee movie. Thumbs up. <laughs> I really like the thumbs up yeah. at the end. It's it like a nice like, touch. Yeah. There's always something in the hate mail. It's, it's like a work of art, you know, because I read a lot of hate mail and sometimes I don't put it on the podcast because I'm like, eh, that's just... Right. That's, you're that's you're just lazy. Hate. Yeah. That's just lazy hate. Lazy hate. This is good hate. Dog slop is a good phrase. And we finish with the thumbs up. Yeah. I like it. And uh, this user, Amy, um, even though her, looks like her Twitter handle is John Sab. So I don't know if Ooh, it's interesting. a boy or a girl. Uh, anyway, they say, um, you know, they are controlled opposition, right? Just look into them more. Ugh. We are all getting taken. Don't support this. Well, not all of us are getting taken. Amy's not getting taken. She's next level. Yeah. Or he. Yeah. Amy. Is Amy one of those names that used to be a boy name? Like Ashley or? I, that's a good question. I don't think so. What is another one? Ashley. Tina. I don't think so. Wait, it's a name for when you used to be a girl? No, oh, no, no. Like, like <laughs> wait. Like it, Ashley it, used to be a boy's name. Yeah. Oh, did it? Yeah. yeah. Now it's a, like there's names like, like Ashton. That, right? Like Ashton. Yeah. yeah. And then it kind of just yeah. eventually comes But over. also like in the Evil Dead movie, Ash is short for Ashley. Oh, let me tell a His story. actually Ashley. Um, I've been traveling a lot, which is why I haven't always been on the podcast. And all that travel should be done, so I should be on the podcast now more. But um, a girl named Tina picked me up. My Uber driver picked me up mm -hmm. to travel back to the Denver airport. And it was like 6 a.m. and I was dead tired. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I opened the door, she's like, I'm Tina. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. And she was actually very, very nice, very kind. Mm -hmm. um, but she talked the entire way to the airport. And we're getting closer to the airport. And she's like telling me about that demon horse statue. Yeah. Oh, the in Denver, Denver airport. Right, yeah. They call it Lucifer or Blucifer or something like Do that. Do they really? And it has glowing red eyes. Yeah. I think it's officially just called the Blue Mustang or Stanley. Oh, so they call it Blucifer, I think is the, like all the locals call yeah. it Blucifer. It's horrifying. And she was telling me how the head fell off and killed the creator, which I had already heard because MJ, our social media gal, had mm -hmm. told me that the night before at our event. But uh, she goes, yeah, the head fell off the statue and it severed his aorta. Aor 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 Aorta, and he bled out and died. Mm -hmm. mm. And I'm like, <laughs> cool. Huh. And then she's telling me how the, the airport's built on this Indian burial ground, and they had to have a shaman come and bless it. And then she's telling me about, like, all these problems that, they, like, pilots going crazy with an ax in the mm -hmm. in the place. And she's like, oh, and there's all these tunnels, the FBI will hold you there forever. What? And we're getting... <laughs> this is the airport that's, like, ridiculously big, yeah. right? It's yeah, and they way think there's, bigger. like, military stuff under it. Yeah, yeah. And then she's telling me, I'm, we're getting close to the airport, and she goes... Um, I've driven here so much, I could close my eyes. She's like, maybe I will. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then she dropped me off, so have a great flight. And uh, I, no, she was actually very kind. So thank you for yeah. the ride, Tina. And I learned a lot about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, was that nerve wracking for you though? Like, is my plane going to crash now? Well, that's what I'm saying. Is she's yeah. telling me like, all oh, pilots go crazy there all the time. And mm -hmm. you know, oh, it's all in this curse. They're constantly ground. murdering each have other. Have a good flight. <laughs> Thanks, Tina. Uh, so, in the last podcast, we asked, what's your favorite insurrection snack? You know, to go along with watching our new movie about the insurrection. January 6th, the most deadliest day. And uh, this guy said, um, Jew, Jew, bees. Hmm. So, I guess that's a reference to us being Jews. Oh, G J E W. Like, Jew, Jew, bees. Yeah. So, so, is that even hate or is he just trying to be clever? Um, just trying to make a joke? Why not both? I like it. Uh, we can yeah. call ourselves the Jujubees. Welcome. Jujubees. Welcome to the podcast. We're your favorite Jujubees. I think if we had a softball team, we'd be the Jujubees. Yeah. All right, here's some more hate for our movie. This is from Mega Church Mouse. I saw January 6th, The Most Deadliest Day by Babylon B. Was expecting a high quality, funny, brilliant mockumentary. Mm. I was quite disappointed overall. 
<laughs> Wait, <laughs> waste of time and money. Seemed like high school amateurs could have produced a better movie. Now, to me, this isn't hate mail. This is honest opinion. Mm. I'm okay with that. Like, I'm a, not everybody's going to like it. Obviously, it's our first one. And obviously, you know, we'd lower budget. Sure. Trying to squeak something out and see what happens. I'm you pretty know? sure we had a better budget than high school amateurs, though. I, I don't, Let's be real. Make okay, so I will mess. say like high school amateurs definitely couldn't have done a better job at this. Mm -hmm. But there, there's some charm to a high school like oh yeah VHS tape movie like we used mm -hmm. to film. You know, absolutely. So, uh, thanks for watching it, Mega Church Mouse. I uh, hope you like the next one better. Okay, information eight nine seven two says January sixth is why Trump has had two attempts on his life: live by the sword, die by the sword. He's asking for it. Yeah, oh. that's what they're saying. So, yeah, this was in response to the movie um, since someone posted about it on Reddit. Yeah. And like, he just... Oh, this is a Redditor. Yeah, oh, that makes Redditor. more sense. <laughs> well, you know you know it's true because he's quoting a Bible verse. Live so. by the sword, die by the sword. Mm -hmm. You know, Scripture is true. Right? Yeah. Well, you can't argue with that. Scripture is true. It is true. Mm -hmm. This one is from a guy named Alan Riemann. Ryman? Sounds Jewish. About our movie. And it says, severely injured and dead cops, overthrowing the government, violent transfer of power. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, the government wasn't overthrown. Yeah. There was no violent transfer of power. There were no dead cops. And there were no dead cops. I know, I, one of the cops did die like the next day or something from a heart condition. Is that? Yes. Yeah, I forget. Like I, I wasn't the one who did the research. I just yeah. wrote the joke. But I Trump mean, supporters didn't kill anybody. Yeah. yeah. Right. Violently. Yeah. And again, like if you <laughs> go just with their minds. <laughs> and again, watch the movie. The point we're making isn't that January 6th was a great day. The point that we're making is that the liberal media goes hysterical over it and says it's the deadliest day ever. And it like literally in the beginning of our movie, we play the clip of Kamala Harris who compares it to September 11th and Pearl Harbor. Like how insane it this is just as severe as Pearl Harbor. Like, what, a, what an insult, man. I went over to the uh, USS Arizona Memorial over the summer. Beautiful place. And, like, I'm crying. You know, my kids are like, why are you crying, Dad? We're just standing on the You know, and it's like, no, you don't understand. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know if this next generation understands how we feel about World War II. And, like, it's still, like, a couple generations from us where we still kind of felt that effect. Yeah. I don't know if our next generation is going to feel so, it in that same way. So, when you were walking around the Capitol, you didn't feel the same way about January 6th? <laughs> yeah, right. I, I mean, it's like you don't because it's... The, it was a protest. It was a protest mm -hmm. that got out of hand, you know, and... <sighs> some bad things happened. Yeah, some bad things happened. And some Trump actors. supporters looked really stupid. Yeah. Uh, you know, I... <laughs> but it wasn't Pearl Harbor. It wasn't. It was not Pearl Harbor. <laughs> and it really makes me so mad. And that's one of the reasons I felt really passionate about doing this movie. It's just that... And, and we remember, like, we remember September 11th, you know, and we were there that day and... I wasn't there that day. I remember we my dad waking me day. up. <laughs> I, I was, it was like our parents' generation. They remembered where they were when JFK was shot. Right, yeah. and that's our And JFK they told us that yeah. I, was, I was in my classroom or I was talking to so-and-so. And then mm -hmm. us, it was 9-11. I remember waking up in the morning, getting ready for school, and the news was on and going, what's happening? Right. Yeah, it's, um, it's that and the release of Super Mario Sunshine. I remember where I was when that came out. All right, here's another one. This is going to make me mad. This is Paraka the Pyro on Reddit. It must suck being Ashley Babbitt's family, seeing her die on a day that gets remembered as a peaceful event by the Republican Party. And then a replier says, a, uh, Ashley Babbitt was an FBI, Antifa, BLM, Obama, Marxist, pet eater. What? And a national hero somehow. I don't know what that's referencing, but in response to the first comment, like, how insane is this Redditor? Mm -hmm. Every single person on the right, like, condemns the fact that the cops shot Ashley Babbitt when she wasn't threatening anybody's life. And yet at the same time, if a cop shoots a black person, no matter what the situation is, no matter how much the cop's life was in danger, no matter if the black man was armed yeah. or whatever, like, it's like, let's all go burn down the country for an entire year. Mm -hmm. And this woman gets shot in the head and she wasn't, yeah, maybe she was being rowdy. I don't know. But like, literally nobody's life was at stake. And for them to uh, like, suddenly hear most of the family, uh, uh, shut up, like go hug your waifu. And watch your anime or whatever you do, Paraka the Pyro. I like Kyle when he's unleashed. When he yeah, just, this is nice. Kyle unhinged. Yeah, yeah passionate Kyle. Kyle fully loaded. If you want to see that passion put into a project, watch January 6th, the most deadliest day. It's, but like we write this movie that's a comedy movie, right? 
but it's you have to have passion about something and that's mm -hmm. like we channel it into comedy that's the only way to mm -hmm. you have to laugh so you don't cry and that's the yeah. only way to really cope with it yeah and you know uh i guess full disclosure uh we asked for permission from ashley babbitt's uh mother to you know dedicate the movie to her so yeah, there's dedication at the end of the movie she's totally aware of the movie yeah and she's okay with it hmm. but guess what truly chicks is a eh? says this looks so entertaining it's not even funny so uninter unentertaining looks so entertaining so unentertaining mm. so is that a word uh, so unentertaining like I am, I am unentertained right now. I am unentertained. Are you not unentertained? <laughs> uh, I like that this is like a hate comment, mm -hmm. and it still has zero votes on Reddit. Yep. Even oh. the redditors are like, like yeah, come yeah, on, this is low effort. They're low effort. <laughs> so here's one from Snoo Comics seven seven four four, making light of an attempt to overthrow an election. Democracy is easy to take for granted until it's threatened by wannabe fascists who refuse to heed the vote. We're lucky there wasn't more deaths, including of the vice president and the speaker of the house, because Trump's supporters, with his encouragement, were calling for their deaths. Yeah. So obviously the movie dismantles that uh, take. No, we actually play the clip of Trump saying, Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Do an insurrection. Do an insurrection. You're right. So this guy is actually on point. <laughs> Yeah, remember they tr they deleted one of Trump's tweets that day, and the tweet that they, they deleted was basically like, peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. He said that in the speech, and then he tweeted something similar, and then he also tweeted like, remember, law enforcement's on our side. Yeah. You know, like they're... Yeah. Like, <laughs> like leftists would never do that if they were running a protest. They're never like, oh, the cops are on our side. Absolutely. Let's all be kind to them. It's like they're like, kill all the cops. Yeah, and, and then know. they still ragged on Trump for that. Like, oh, it took him two hours to do that. I he was probably hard. trying to figure out what was going on and assess the situation. All right, this is uh, from 44035 on Reddit who says, Babylon B is like if Matt Walsh became a website. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I, mm -hmm. I wish we were as popular as Matt Walsh. But the funny thing is Matt Walsh did start out as a website. That's how he got popular. He, oh. he had Matt Walsh blog. <laughs> was That's <like> right. <laughs> or is Matt Walsh like if the Babylon B became a, a person? person? Yes. Yeah. That's scary to think about. <laughs> it is scary. It's like Edward Scissorhands <laughs> or something. I really like the Calvin and Hobbes imagery of like shrinking someone with like a transmogrifier. Like like mm -hmm. you're a person and like making them into a website. Whoa. So um, this, I guess, person named Seth Dillon, I don't know who he is. <laughs> uh, he says, the mods of Christianity subreddit have banned Babylon B articles. I will never financially recover from this. Okay, so here's the hate mail then. It's this admin on uh, the subreddit. We're blocking submission of Babylon B link posts. When the B was founded in 2016 by Adam Ford, it was described as, quote, Christian satire. And then they link our article. It's the New Baptist Version of the Bible replaces all uses of hell with heck. They'd post stuff like that and still do. Like even in the post, they're admitting, we still do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when Seth Dillon bought the site, it started posting a lot of articles that went really hard on Democrats, the left in general, liberal causes, LGBT people, women, minorities. Mm. The problem is the last three targets. Okay, and so the problem is not, we can make fun of the left. We're allowed to make fun of Democrats. We're allowed to make fun of liberal causes, but we can't make fun of LGBT people women <laughs> or minorities mm. it says it right in the bible yeah, you right. can't do that well, there's no i don't think we've ever made fun of a minority in a way that was like look how bad that race is <laughs> you know what i mean like you make jokes that are edgy you make jokes that play with cultures yeah you say that vivek ramaswamy should work at a 7-eleven right we've used stereotypes but <laughs> but you never make a joke that really like makes fun of a minority the only probably the only race that we've ever made fun of as white people <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that we've really gone hard on you know with the yeah that was that one that adam ford did um the photoshop for with oh the yeah inbred uh incest inbred. adam ford photoshopped his own face and to look like an inbred deformed man <laughs> <laughs> to make fun of white supremacists and then like a bunch of white supremacists got mad at and us. Then, like, <laughs> well i remember when everyone got mad about the 7-eleven vivek joke um, what's interesting to me is the projection that they're making. Their yeah. they, their projection is that working at Seven Eleven is is not good. Like yeah. it's not mm -hmm. decent or honorable. And to me, like when I go into a Seven Eleven and I see some guy who's been working there for twenty years, I'm like, man, that guy's a hard worker and mm -hmm. he's a business owner and and he's still not fixing the slushy machine. <laughs> <laughs> 
I talked to it, like an Arabic guy that ran a 7-Eleven in DC and he was the friendliest yeah. guy ever. He was working there at 11 p.m. It was the only place I could grab a snack after my flight. And he's, where are you from? He's talking to me. And uh, I'm like, dude, this guy's probably been here for 18 hours today oh, yeah. or whatever. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right. So our like, perception is just like, that's a hardworking yeah. American, you know? Yeah, he didn't perform a terrorism on you? He did not. He wow. Did not. Um, bold. Uh, what? <laughs> I, but I was not wearing my MAGA hat at the time. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So always remember to tip your 7-Eleven worker. Uh, Chica Hua says, in my opinion, they stopped being a Christian humor site when they posted that horrific Elmo article, mocking those who have been sexually assaulted in the church. What? Tinfoil had time, but I think it was a purposeful move to distance themselves from the church, like most radicals. They pay lip service to Christianity to avoid hell. <laughs> what? And because they wrongly associate Christianity with America and being white. That's not how you avoid hell, though. I really miss their original content, or their original content. Hoping people can make an actual Christian humor site. For a brief time, they had it right. And it's a pity it's become another propaganda machine. So, first of all, the, a, there was never an Elmo article that made fun of sexual assault problems in the church. And I don't, I, I kind of figured out that I think they were talking about an article. We, we were talking about an Elmo doll, like a mm -hmm. Tickle Me Elmo doll, this, the feminist version. Mm. And if you poke it, it goes, I do not consent. <laughs> Which yeah. I think is a little... I think I think the joke in that can be a little unclear. Personally, sure. I'm like, I was, "What are you trying to say?" What does that know? have to do with? Um, but it has nothing to do with sexual assault, and it has nothing to do with the church. So, <laughs> but, but like I guess in, in their head, head it was like the timing, like, like it's a Me Too thing, and yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know. Like maybe there was a story that came out, yeah. and then we posted that at the same time. Like I don't know. I'm shocked that this redditor doesn't understand humor. Shocking. And 79 other people who, who gave it an updoot. Yeah. Yeah, but it does drive me nuts that people can post comments like that and then it goes uh, unresponded to. It's like, oh, yeah, we, we made fun of sexual assault in the church. Yeah. Like, and that now 79 people think that's true. Yeah, it's so yeah. weird. <laughs> and Let Us Devil 1, or 1 Edis Devi 1, says, it's a shame what became of them. And Sooner Freak replies, I haven't been active in the church for years. I don't think you're supposed to read that one. Oh. Yeah, I won't read that one. Yeah. It's kind of, but yeah. growing up in it, I really enjoyed the old... And then it cuts off because that's all be screenshotted. <laughs> oh, I thought he needed to scroll down. So I do, I do kind of like that's funny that the person's like, so I'm not really a Christian. But, but yeah, I used to like the old stuff that he did. You know, yeah. like, oh, okay, I guess that makes sense. But uh, yeah, and here's one other thing to address is this kind of comment comes up a lot. Like, oh, they used to be just making worship leader jokes and they, they only did Christian jokes. And then all of a sudden they started doing political content. Well, if you read the, if you actually read the Babylon Bee since the beginning, our very first article was a picture of o Obama crying, <laughs> like because he's so triggered that the mm -hmm. <laughs> conservatives have finally started satire. So we've put, we had seventeen articles uh, when the site launched, and I believe nine of them were political, and eight of them were like Christian jokes or general mm -hmm. jokes. Yeah. So we constantly did political jokes right from the beginning. Um, that was one of part of Adam Ford's vision for the original um, for the original Babylon Bee. So this idea that it like shifted or something. And then the other thing is that the idea that Christians should only make Christian jokes. Mm -hmm. Like Christians should never talk politics or, which of course they wouldn't say if we were a liberal site. If we were a liberal site, liberal Christian site making fun of Republicans and conservatives, they'd be okay with that. And they're probably fine with the jokes that we do that make fun of Trump. Mm -hmm. But you do them from the other side and all of a sudden it's, oh, Christians shouldn't engage in the culture war. Yeah. You know, oh, you just need to stay in your little ghetto making ghetto Christian jokes with your ghetto friends. I like Unhinged Kyle. Mm-hmm. It's this, um, it's this electrolyte beverage. Oh, that's brought to you it. by Brought Element. to you by, <laughs> is that how you say this? Element? That's how I would read it. Oh. Element. Oh. L -M -M I always said it's, oh, give me one of those Elementees. Yeah, or Element. Element. It's pretty good, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> Another part about that narrative that doesn't make sense to me is that you've been the bee's head writer since the beginning. Right. And it's not like there was like a massive shift in editorial tone because mm -hmm. it's been you since the beginning, pretty much. People just saw like our political content a lot more because it started getting shared by like Ben Shapiro and, mm -hmm. and other people like that. And so when, whenever we post a political joke or a joke about a current event, it goes crazy viral, right? Like people share it, it goes all over the planet. Yeah. And then we write a joke about a worship leader the same day and it doesn't because it, yeah. it's not going to go as viral. That's, some, some people like at church will like share and go, huh, did you see that? Huh, yeah, niche. I did. It's, it's, that's that's just it. the nature of the comedy. So, you know, there's a sense where that content just gets seen a lot more often. But you're absolutely right. That's the other thing is they're like, Seth bought it at this time 
and he changed it into this, like as if Seth came in and said, here, we're going to change what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, when Seth bought the Babylon Bee in 2018, he was like the perfect owner. And he still is the perfect owner to run the Babylon Bee because he doesn't interfere with the creative, mm -hmm. you know? Obviously, he's got his opinions. He can talk to me anytime if he doesn't like an article. Or and then you he, say, no. And I said, no, man, forget you. <laughs> But there, was, there wasn't a meeting where he came in and slammed everything off the desk and said, all right, hold the presses. We're not doing any more Christian jokes. No more Christian jokes. Only making fun of the left. Yeah, he calls me. He's like, why did you make fun of Trump? What the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> but like in the newspaper world or the media world or the comedy world, it's so rare for an owner to come in and buy a company and say, don't change anything. Mm -hmm. Keep doing what you're doing. And that's like the uh, absolute ideal situation for us. So if the Babylon Bee is terrible and too political, it's my fault, not Seth's. Don't want him taking credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we sent out a newsletter email and we got a reply that I thought was funny. A standard newsletter. And they said, Flower bed. Off. <laughs> Please excuse any grammatical errors. <laughs> Sent from my iPhone. <laughs> are, there, are there any grammatical errors in that? I don't think so because it's an imperative um, and then off would be an adjective that's modifying the imperative mm -hmm. form of the verb. So I don't, you don't need a comma or anything. Um, yeah. yeah they, I, think I think they nailed it. It's pretty solid. No grammatical errors. Good for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to move into our main segment, which is dramatic readings of unhinged, crazy leftist takes. So Donald Trump tends to trigger liberals. And sometimes those liberals go online and post insane things. And these insane things are very, very sad. So we're gonna do dramatic readings of a few things that liberals have said about Trump. Here's the first one. This is from Time Magazine, which is one of my favorite articles of all time. I cried when I told my daughters Donald Trump will be president. <laughs> and we can uh, take turns on the paragraphs or something. Sure. All right. <clears throat> Now, this is from an article. I don't know if it's from that article. This is this is the article that this was posted the morning after Trump won, I believe. Okay, so this is from that article, yep. the headline you read. I tried to keep the tremble out of my voice as I woke them. I helped them get ready, saying the minimum. I didn't know how to tell them. How do you look into the eyes of the hopeful youth <laughs> and tell them everything they have loved is a lie? <laughs> How do you answer when they ask you if their friends will have to move away? <laughs> what do you say when they stare at you, empty and incredulous and scared for reasons they don't quite understand? I kept starting with, hey, girls, and then my mouth would dry up and the tears would well, and I would busy myself with another morning task instead. This happened three times. I didn't want to cry when I told them. I didn't want to alarm them. I didn't want them to go to school with targets on their backs for talking about all the reasons Trump should not have been elected. They knew them by heart because they followed this campaign with me. <laughs> this is the world into which I am sending them. And they have a right to know what's in store. But we live in Florida. <laughs> and their elementary school is Trump leaning. And I am suddenly afraid of free speech. <laughs> hey, hey, girls, I finally managed. So Donald Trump will be our next president. The tears started coming. So I looked away quickly. And when they asked, I, I blamed it on sickness. I needed to be strong for them to instill within them strength of their own. After all, they will be the generation most affected by this. I feel bad for the black people, mommy, <laughs> said one. <laughs> yeah, and all the poor people, the other said. <laughs> Try not to talk about it in school, I said, knowing some of their teachers would be elated at this red tide victory. <laughs> they nodded, wide-eyed. Then we walked to school like we always do as if the country hadn't just galvanized around some sense of disillusionment and hopelessness. Racism and sexism have had a bully year, fueled <laughs> by deep-seated fear, propelled by stereotypes like anchor babies, slovenly immigrants, terrorists, and welfare queens. <laughs> For decades, many have carefully crafted a false narrative of cultural identities based on white fear, ignorance, and discontentment. And that rhetoric somehow normalized. 
It made those casting stones feel powerful instead of ashamed. White people allowed this fear-based hate to grow unchecked until it became the new normal and we granted it to the highest office in our land. How do you tell your kids their friends might have to leave? How do you tell them you don't know if they'll be able to go to the doctor anymore? <laughs> how, how do you tell them that if men paw at them or make them uncomfortable, our country might not care. How do you tell them the world will likely become less safe for them and possibly downright dangerous for their friends? How do we tell our kids that we did this to them? How do we live with that? Wow. That was emotional and intense. I want to follow up with this lady's kids. I wonder, I wonder how like she's how, doing now. How are they oh, doing? Eight oh, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so during Trump's presidency, Time had an interview with him and um, they talked about the dining habits of the president. Mm -hmm. And so they got to go to the White House and they described their experiences. Um, mm -hmm. So this is them setting, sitting down at the White House, Trump and a bunch of journalists. Mm -hmm. The waiters know well Trump's personal preferences. As he settles down, they bring him a Diet Coke while the rest of us are served in water. <laughs> <laughs> with the vice president sitting at one end of the table. With the salad course, Trump has served what appears to be Thousand Island dressing instead of the creamy vinaigrette for his guests. When the chicken arrives, he is the only one given an extra dish of sauce. At the dessert course, he gets two scoops of vanilla ice cream with his chocolate cream pie instead of the single scoop for everyone else. <laughs> the tastes of Mike Pence are also tended to. Instead of the pie... He gets a fruit bowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is the uh, breathless reporting from Time. Like mm -hmm. this is the this is the hard hitting reporting we've we've come to expect. <sighs> well, one person who clearly read Time is the current uh, CEO of The Onion. Uh, this is Ben Collins, who was the misinformation hall monitor for MSNBC, and recently gathered together with some rich folks and bought The Onion to try to save The Onion, and. Um, he was candid on his Twitter account this week talking about how horrible it was under Trump. But Dan, do you want to start with this one here? <clears throat> sure. The more I talk about the election, the more shocked I am by how many people have memory hold 2016 to 2020. Every day was a new horror. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> new emergencies popped up constantly. I fundamentally don't understand how people seemingly forgot all about it. I think he was just playing Sim City, and all the disasters <laughs> kept happening. Oh, it's happening! They should be mixing it up. Yeah. Even before the pandemic, there was a spate of white supremacist mass murders that happened in random places, malls, places of worship, garlic festivals. Yeah, that hasn't happened before or since. This was, in hindsight, one guy's fault, uncovered as he's a coin flip away from power. Coin Terrifying, flip. yeah. And my favorite part about this is uh, I'd gathered a few comments from some people under that, and everybody, it's like all like the average Onion reader, and they're replying to it like, "Yes, every day was like Hiroshima, <laughs> <laughs> like literally, like how insane, right?" At the garlic festival, I guess there was a shooting at a garlic festival, oh. but it was like a, it was like an Iranian guy oh. or something, and it's like every single thing that happened during those four years it was pinned on Trump, Trump and white supremacy. Mm. And this to me is why the left isn't funny. It, it isn't funny any longer. Why they're so bad at comedy now. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you guys remember Frank Fleming, our, uh, our uh, writer that used to yeah. write here and he's off at the Daily Wire making their cartoons. So go check that out. Uh, Chinchilla, the Chinchilla show. What's mm -hmm. it called? Chilla, Chilla, Chip, Chip, Chilla. Chilla. Chip, Chip. I want to say Chilla time. That's what they first His called. name is Chip. Yeah. So go check that out and support him and support his work and Ethan and all those guys over there doing that stuff. Um, Bent Key, I think is, is what you subscribe to. But mm -hmm. Frank Fleming... Um, wrote for us for for some years. And uh, he was so good at the Trump humor because mm -hmm. he would write the stuff that like ha had a respect for and an adoration for Trump's personality while at the same time really making fun of him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you are mocking him in a way, but you're finding something that you like about the person that you're satirizing. And the left mm -hmm. can't do that with Trump because to to them, Trump is Hitler. How do you find something mm -hmm. to admire about Hitler? How do, you, how do you play with his personality when he's literally the worst? So, Frank Fleming used to say, he might've said this on the podcast like way back in the day, but he said, imagine that you're pitching to a Hollywood executive in like 2005 mm -hmm. and you go to them and you say, hey, I've got this great idea for a movie. Donald Trump gets elected president. And 
they're, and, and they start laughing. Oh, that's great. Oh, it's going to be hilarious. All the stuff that he'll do and his personality and sure. you're fired and like, oh man, this is going to be great. And you're like, no, 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 no. It's a drama. <laughs> <laughs> it's very serious. It's mm -hmm. the end of democracy. You know, and they're like, uh, they're what? Yeah, we'll call you. We'll let you know. Thanks for coming yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, it's so true. They can't see the humor in the situation. It's so funny. Like Donald Trump is the president of the United States for four years. Mm -hmm. That's freaking hilarious. And you know, it, they used to not be like this. Um, I mean, Mel Brooks once said, I, I, to be fair, I don't know if Mel Brooks leans left or right, but um, he, he makes fun of Hitler all the time. Right. And, he, you know, he once said that that's one of the things you have to do for someone like that because you take away their power. Right. By, you make fun of a tyrant. And it, it's yeah. funny. Not that Trump is a tyrant. But if you think he is, do things that are actually make some good comedy about mm -hmm. him instead of just lecturing people because you lose your power when you become a lecturer. Like yeah. That. Because everyone hates le being lectured. Yeah. Springtime for, for Hitler, Hitler and Germany. Germany. Oh, I love that song. Unironically. <laughs> So here's an interesting thing that we've noticed uh, on social media that um, there are feminists and, and lefty type people that are sharing infographics on how to leave your conservative husband. So this, is from, this was from uh, Feminist News. Women, leave your moronic right wing husband. Make the plan, not just a concept of a plan. And there's an infographic here of how to safely leave your conservative husband. Wow. <laughs> All right. So here they are. Start saving any money you can. There's no need to discuss anything with him or his family. Just make up your mind and act on it. <laughs> Use his job to your advantage. <laughs> Is this satire? I, this reads like satire. Use his job to your advantage. Leave while he's there for the day slash night. Well, I like how they assume that the conservative husband has a job. That's, that's what made me think maybe it's satire. <laughs> uh, what else we got? He can and will attempt to take the children from school. Keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. Use the gray rock method. Do not engage. What is the gray rock method? I assume it's like you're just a rock and so nothing he says, like you don't respond to him. Oh, the, well. Maybe that's what it is. What about, you know, the I'm rubber and you're glue? What? Yeah, that method works as well. Okay. What if he uses like a water type Pokemon? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. It's really strong against rock. So it also says replace electronics he can easily track and keep your plan to yourself. Two exclamation marks. Two exclamation points. All right. And maybe it's I would, not I would think it was parody, but it's tweeted out by Feminist News. So, so. Oh, yeah, but I was wondering maybe if that's a satire site. But I guess it's so hard to tell the difference between satire and reality. I'm going to lean towards this as reality. Hmm. All right. We have lefty influencers on X with interesting stories to share. Here's Jojo from Jers. The other day, my 11-year-old turned to me in the car and said to one of, said one of her friends, loves Trump. She continued with, and I was like, how? Don't you worry about Project 2025? <laughs> Don't you know how bad that would be for all of us? <laughs> Even the kids get in. And then everyone clapped. Yeah. And that kid would grow up to be Albert Einstein. She says even the kids get it, but her friend didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. So normally they tell stories like that and you don't believe it. It's like my three year old said this, but I believe that Jojo from Jersey's 11 year old would say something like that. Right. It's like that's not saying that the kids just, get it. It's yeah, her, she's ranting about her it. Her mom's constantly ranting about Project 2025. Well, and looping back to that time story, uh, what cracked me up about that story uh, was that it's they say, what about the black people, mom? And what about the poor people? Like, She's obviously been telling them, like, oh, this yeah. is going to kill all the black people and it's kill yeah, all the yeah. poor. And then the fact that the kids are, like, she's always talking about the poors mm -hmm. around her kids. Like, yeah. oh, the poor people over there, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it cracks me up. What about the poor people, mom? What about those <laughs> poors? So after the assassination attempt on Donald Trump, um, which I guess technically there have been three Which one now. are yeah. you referring to? Yeah. Uh, so there were plenty of total normal reactions like this one by Oath... Dreamer, Trump photo next to Hitler photo is eerily similar. What? Because they're both putting their hand up? It's one of, yeah, Trump being, holding his hand up right after being shot in the ear, and the other one's Hitler in a completely different context holding up his fist. And I, I assume Hitler was doing one of these, like... Oh, yeah, like slamming his fish, fist down. Oh, it got zero upvotes, though. So maybe oh, even the sad. Redditors were... 31 comments. Yeah. <laughs> waking up to him. Mm. Uh, this is one that we just found today. Uh, James Carville was on uh, Jen Psaki's new show on MSNBC. That's insane. He's the veteran uh, Democrat political guy. And um, 
He said, I did not realize when I said that, that he would actually go on television and say, I'm going to use the military to round up my political enemies. When I said that, I didn't know that he was going to schedule a rally at Madison Square Garden to mimic the Nazi rally on February 10, 1939. Trump held rallies? Hitler held rallies. Yeah. Coincidence? I think so. I mean... <laughs> but on this news segment, he actually like li- li- named the date. He scheduled it for November something, 2024, mm-hmm. just like the Nazis did with February 10. On a completely <laughs> different date to throw us off. Yeah. I love that Jen Psaki just lied for the Biden administration for years. And now she's And then lying. flipped that into a job on MSNBC, lying to everybody every mm-hmm. day. And I don't know why people keep listening to James Carville. Like... Maybe he used to be a prominent person, but now he's just he an was, old ranting man. Yeah, he was a Bill Clinton advisor, I yeah. think. Yeah, and he's an LSU fan. <laughs> <laughs> Sports ball. But the thing is, sometimes he'll like um, he'll give advice to other Democrats, like they need to stop doing this with Kamala, and then so he sounds almost like the voice of reason. But then he'll say something like that, like, "What's wrong with this guy?" <laughs> Banger of the week. Democrats perplexed why a candidate nobody ever voted for is slipping in the polls. Hmm. For our blind listeners, blind people can listen, right? Yeah. For our blind listener, oh, there wouldn't be viewers. So our, for our blind listeners, Kamala Harris is the picture for that article. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it kind of seems like Democrats are in full freak out mode mm-hmm. just based on some basic observations. Like the polls are getting very close in these swing states. Mm-hmm. Um, CNN has, a, has an expert going on. He's talking about how, you know, Four years ago, Biden was up six points compared to where Kamala is right now. Clinton Um, was up eight. Biden was up seven. Harris is up one. (laughs) Yeah, in Michigan, (laughs) Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Oh, my god, That's an average across all three. An average? Oh, that's average across those. Uh, Axios had an article that was saying that the the staff of Biden and the staff of Harris were kind of squabbling. Yeah. Um, They're like, there's a lot of hurt feelings. Like, if, if a Biden guy goes over and works for Kamala, he's kind of treated like a traitor. Um, uh-huh. even though he's endorsed Kamala, but there, there seems to be like this, these tensions under the surface there. Yeah, they're not they're not really working together as much as they say they are. He hasn't really hit the campaign trail for her. He's mm-hmm. just kind of just hung out and just done his own thing. Yeah, and then every now and then he'll be like, ah, we're the same. We're yeah. the exact same person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and according to this, Trump is the strongest Republican with black voters since 1960, with young black men in particular trending right, and he's doing historically well with black women too. What was... Uh, going on in 1960 um that would be jfk and uh nixon nixon oh so nixon i'm just saying things right after dan so i sound like i know what i'm talking (laughs) oh okay thanks kyle that was the board game we played we need uh, to get that did you play that board game with me i want that board game i used to have it we need to buy it i got a free copy what's it called to review it and i don't have it it's uh like the race for the president 1960 making of the president that's what it is oh that's a completely different you 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 go it's a it's based on twilight struggle with like the card play Mm -hmm. but you're uh you're trying to win electoral votes. Interesting. It's actually really good. All right, what are we? Uh, what are we talking about? Where are we? What so, planet are we on? So uh, uh, Kamala is not doing well with the blacks. And <laughs> despite not doing well with the blacks, she also appears to not be doing well with the mans, which is why she has released a banger ad called "I'm a man, and I'm voting for Kamala." Let's take a watch. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man, man. And I'm man enough. I'm man enough to enjoy a barrel-proof bourbon. Mm. Mm. Man enough to cook my steak right. rare. <laughs> man enough to deadlift 500, then braid the <laughs> out of my daughter's hair. What? You think I'm afraid to rebuild a carburetor? I eat carburetors for breakfast. I, I believe it. Bears. That's what bear hugs are for. I'll tell you another thing I sure as shit am not afraid of. <laughs> women. I'm not afraid what? of women. I'm not afraid of women. They want to control <laughs> their bodies? I say go for it. They want to use IVF to start a family? I'm not afraid of families. You want to be childless cat ladies? Have all the cats you want. Woman wants to be president? Well, I hope she has the guts to look me right in the eye and accept my full-throated endorsement. Because I'm man enough to support women. Man enough to know what kind of donuts I like. Man enough to admit I'm lost even when I refuse to ask for directions. Man enough to not ban young women from reading Little Women. Or one of those pants books that the sisters like. I'm man enough to raw dog a flight. It sucked. Not worth it. I'm man enough to what? be emotional in front of my wife. In front of my kids. In front of my horse. I'm man enough to tell you that I cry at Love Actually. Goodwill Hunting. West Side Story. That 
and predator. And I'm sick of so-called men domineering, belittling, and controlling women just so they can feel more powerful. That's not how my mama raised me. I love women. I love women who support their families. Women who decide not to have families. Women who take charge. And I'm man enough to help them win. Can't believe that's a real ad. That is so cringy. I can't even, yeah, like you say, it's like, how is that real? I just have to say, <laughs> I'm not afraid of women. I like women. <laughs> so they're, they're struggling with getting men to vote for Kamala and they release an ad. You, you want to release an ad where it's like all these manly men that are like, yeah, I'm voting for Kamala because I'm a dude, but they can't even do that. It's, mm -hmm. it's got to, it's got to deconstruct it somehow where it's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a man who's in touch with my feelings and I'm, you yeah. know, I'm not afraid to be called effeminate as I sit on this truck yeah. with my legs crossed. Yeah, the comedic like, and, and conservative direction is completely wrong. You're absolutely right. And they and they actually didn't do the, the cadence right. Like you need to build into the more mm -hmm. absurd ones. They just did. It, they just like randomly cut it. I'm more offended as a comedian than I am as a, <laughs> as a right winger. Uh, black voters in the inner city are concerned with Venezuelans and Im illegal immigrants taking away their jobs. And Axios reported, like you were saying, that they're squabbling between the Biden and Harris teams. Um, why would Biden help Harris when they? I gotta, no. I gotta imagine that if I was Biden, I would have an incentive to see Harris go down in flames because it's like you shoved me out of the way so you can put your candidate who's better than me yeah. in the race, and if you lose, that means I'm right. Yeah, but I have every incentive in the world not to help you. Yeah, it makes me wonder if there's some sort of um, background deal, backroom deal, where he can't outright just say, oh, I hate Kamala, because I can see him wanting to do well, that's, that. Well, yeah, the party. It's all the toe in the yeah. party line, and they're... So he's he's trying to look like he's helping her, but very clearly not. He's scheduling events at the same time <laughs> she's doing rallies and things yeah. like that. Uh, they're, they're even saying, and, and get on your knees and pray, folks, that Harris might go on the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> that would be amazing. Please, so Lord, amazing. let Kamala Harris go on the Joe Rogan podcast. We deserve this. I can't, I can't believe that actually would actually happen. It would be amazing. I think it's the, that they're putting the rumor out there to show, hey, she's willing to yeah, talk to that's people, true. and that's it. It would be absolutely amazing. And Joe Rogan's not even like this investigative journalist who's going to be grilling her. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that she would have to carry a conversation for three hours would be yeah. so interesting. But another thing that's interesting is that um, Kamala Harris apparently plagiarized at least a dozen sections of her 2009 book called Smart on Crime. <laughs> uh, I just love that title coming from her. Christopher Rufo, who has taken down a few leftists with his investigations into uh, plagiarism, found this. Um, and uh, he, they, compared, they compared the sections and I looked at it. And she appears to have copy pasted sections from Wikipedia into her book. <laughs> yeah, that's believable. And uh, they they figured it out when the book had citation needed in it. <laughs> <laughs> it has like the bracketed numbers, the bracketed yeah. numbers, and everything. No, but they saw that, and then she took some stuff from some actually published articles and and other academics and all this stuff. She just yeah. straight up ripped it. Now, to be fair. Kamala Harris probably did not actually write her book. It was probably a, a ghostwriter. Probably. None of these people write their books. Yeah. I write my books. I read every, every word of my book. Mm. And uh, Babylon B actually writes our books. Maybe you're working too hard. I think I am. And I need to find a ghostwriter mm -hmm. to just write my books for me. But um, at the same time, it doesn't matter. You put your name on a book and it's plagiarized. That's on you. Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. And uh, the New York Times reported on this not by saying... Kamala Harris is a plagiarist, but by saying this conservative activist seized on passages from Harris's book, you're bad for pointing it out. Yeah. The story <laughs> is the conservatives, not Kamala's plagiarism, right? Yeah. And so, they actually admit in the article, the five passages that uh, Rufo cited appeared to have been taken partly from other published work, but some academics have characterized the campaign as racist. <laughs> what? <laughs> so it's racist to point it's out when you point plagiarize out they, in your book? Yes. Oh. Yes. Because she's black and Indian. Hmm. Yes. I just love how Kamala Harris wrote a book on crime called Smart on Crime. Mm -hmm. And then she plagiarized it. <laughs> <laughs> and the, a, a book with Kamala Harris's name on it has the word smart in the title. Mm -hmm. Right. It's so great. So, uh, of course, we have a new article on our website. Kamala Harris announces all new original book, The Art of the Deal. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love that uh, yeah. that shot. That's so good. And now it's time for this week's Heroes of the Faith. In these trying times, it can be hard to hold on to your faith or mm. even know what faith is. What is faith? Why is faith? Mm. Well, this week, our hero of the faith is here to tell us what faith is. Let's take a watch. It is easy in these moments of crisis to, to question our faith, to sometimes lose our faith for a moment, because what we see is so hard to see that we lose faith or a vision of those things we cannot see but must know. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, easy in these times of moments of crisis to question our faith, to lose our faith for a moment, because uh -huh. what we see is so hard to see that we lose faith or a vision of those things we cannot see. You must know. Faith is a vision of those things. These word salads, man. I you guess this is, this is the visual, the clip. So oh. she's talking in some church somewhere. Oh, she's speaking at a church. Christian center. Is this that Christian nationalism I've heard so much about? Uh, yeah, they always, they always criticize. Yeah, they always criticize the right if they speak in a church. It's like, oh, that's nationalism, Christian nationalism. And then they go in churches all the time, mm -hmm. Kamala and Barack and, oh, man. Well, what a, what a fantastic... Um, hero of the faith this week. And actually, according to Kamala Harris, you can reconcile your faith with abortion. Mm -hmm. And let us all agree, one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling her what to do with her body. Okay. Well, her body. I, I don't know about you, but I feel uplifted. Mm. I feel inspired. Yeah. How, how do you feel, Dan? <laughs> I'm not allowed to have an opinion because I don't have a uterus. So, uh, well, you know, you know what? I would like to thank you for calling me out on that. No. Yeah. And I apologize for saying that I felt inspired. I, I would also like to. I would like apologize. to see a Kamala Harris translation of the Bible where it's like, <laughs> we all let us all agree. The faith <laughs> is that, that faith is now faith. Yeah. Is what we have to envision, but we see, but we cannot see. But we must see. <laughs> and that's so we lose faith. But then we can't. And the uh, the Corinthians are opening the letter like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Huh. Pass this one on to the church at Ephesus. They can have this one. Yeah. That's it, everybody. Our podcast is coming to an end. So, but it's not coming to an end if you have money. Because we're going to the subscriber lounge. We're going to give our thoughts on the new movie. Talk a little bit about the behind the scenes stuff. And uh, we're going to read some headlines that our subscribers sent in. We got a lot of new subscribers from the movie. So, hello, new subscribers. Join Hi. us in the subscriber lounge. And, and if you're a premium subscriber, pitch us headlines in the forum. Maybe you get right on the podcast. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody else, go to babylonb.com slash January 6th, sign up, watch the movie, use promo code podcast, and you save some money. Nobody knows that. And we'll see you guys next time. It is easy in these moments of crisis to, to question our faith, to sometimes lose our faith for a moment, because what we see is so hard to see that we lose faith or a vision of those things we cannot see but must know. Wait, what?